What is up everyone, your friendly neighborhood onesie guy here with another Marvel Snap video. And today we're just going to take a look at what the month of April is going to be holding for us. Now this video is a little bit delayed. Um, I've had a little bit of personal issues getting in the way of me uh, recording and posting this. But hopefully it will still be informative as most of the stuff in this video has not been released in the game yet. Now before we get into the cards and bundles, I'd just like to mention that I have started a second channel, Onesie Guy Unplugged, and you can have a look at that. The link will be down in the description below. Uh, on that channel, I will be posting my trailer reactions and movie reviews as I've done before on this channel, as well as personal vlogs and something new I call story time, where I'll basically be reading short stories to you so you can just sit back and relax and listen to a story narrated by me as well as me doing all the voices if there are any so if that is something that interests you I uh, would go ahead and take a look at that and subscribe if you do like the content there is very minimal content at the moment but trust me there will be a lot more coming up in the next couple of weeks so now that that is out of the way, let's get looking at the Marvel Snap content for the month of April. First up, we're going to go ahead and look at the new cards coming in this month. Uh, the first card here is Steg Stegron, a four cost, five power card on reveal, move an enemy card from here to another location. So on face value the stats are kind of uh, bleh if i can put it that way uh, the on reveal effect is quite interesting moving an enemy card is always great if you're looking to swing that on the final turn however this is a random card you're not able to choose which card gets removed uh, or gets moved so it can be something uh, a little bit difficult to use and utilize correctly. There will obviously be situations where this is going to be a very powerful swing, winning you the game, winning you the location. Um, however, this would definitely be a late game card. This would definitely be something you pull out on turn six. And uh, I don't think this will be a staple to any deck. I think this would be a tech card. Um, additionally, like with Arrow, it can move face down cards. So unrevealed cards can also be moved. So if you're looking to move a specific card, there's only one card in the lane, and you think, okay, I'm gonna play this, it'll move it out of the lane. The opponent plays something else in that lane, it moves that instead. Basically, this card becomes useless. So I do think it has a lot of potential, but looking at it directly now, the power of the card, um, I would rather play Arrow in the same position. Uh, even though Arrow does cost one more, its base power is, is a lot more effective. So we'll have to wait and see how effective this card is going to be. But in my personal opinion, it's not going to be one of those meta-defining cards. Then we have a very interesting card, uh, Snow God. So Snow God has two forms. Um, when it enters your hand, we've been confirmed that it will transform into this form, which is the Hawk form. Um, if you get this off a randomly generated thing, uh, it will be in your hand uh, as normal base Snow God. And then on the next turn, it will then flip to reveal. Uh, at the start of your next turn and it will always reveal first to this form which is the hawk form uh, so this form is on reveal ignore all location abilities next turn so which is great uh, if you're trying to stop something like Krakoa or um, death's domain or anything like that any um, location ability the next turn this can be a very powerful card um, and it doesn't say location you've played it at, it's all location abilities as far as I'm aware. So this form especially is going to be, I think, very powerful um, as a board swing. Uh, and again, might end up being a staple in a lot of decks because it essentially fills that one cost 
slot in your deck so if you get something that draws a one cost card etc um, it will be drawn as a one cost and then transform into the various two forms like you see here the hawk form is a three cost four power so I definitely think this this card can help you control more what what you're going to do on your next turn again this is not just a one-sided reveal it's ignore all location abilities for both players so always remember that it's also going to ignore abilities for your opponent however you're going to have the foresight in mind that this is going to be ignored so it can be potentially a lot more powerful for you and we have the second form of snow guard the bear form a five cost three power on reveal trigger the effect of this location so whether it be a location that draws extra cards uh, gives you extra things like squirrels or um, generates an extra card to your hand it can effectively be quite powerful um, I think that this would mostly work very well in decks that run around um, deck size and hand size. So your Dark Hawks, your um, your Ronins, your um, why am I blanking on this now? Your Devil Dinosaurs it will definitely help a lot there. It is a very high cost card though, so I'm not sure when you use this. You may use this. Um, at the end of a game and you trigger something uh, you know that the first card you play here gets destroyed and you don't mind losing this but your opponent plays a card there you get to reveal first you reveal this boom the next card your opponent plays gets destroyed or if you're on second reveal your opponent basically then cannot play another card there the following turn which would be then turn six so again its use is going to be um, something that you're going to have to play by ear within the game. It's not always going to have a great use, but with Snow Guard switching between the two forms, I can see this is going to be a very interesting card to play. I can definitely see this going to find some place in a lot of decks and uh, help you win a lot of games depending on which variant or which form of Snow Guard you actually use. Then we get to the card that I'm most excited for, that I'm saving up my collector's tokens for. Um, I'm not touching any other card until this card comes into play, and that is Jeff the Land Shark, a two cost, three power card. You can move this card once. Nothing can stop you from moving or playing this card at any location. So yeah, this card can pretty much do anything, be played anywhere. Um, yeah, locations do not stop this card. Um, card reveal effects do not stop this card. This go great in if you have your own deck with Ebony Moor. You can still play this on a place you've played Ebony Moor. Um, you can play this on a Spider-Man location. This card just has so many uses. Um, its power level is not that great, but again, the utility of this card is just so high. And the card is just so adorable that who would not want to play Jeff the Land Shark? Um, and it's also the potential to move this card, moving it out of a Professor X location or into a Professor X location to win a location can be pretty vital. So I can definitely see this card being a staple in a lot of decks. And because of its low cost, um, I, it can definitely find a place for this at your two power to use it whenever i mean you can use this on your final turn you can use this in the beginning of the match to kind of you know gauge out what your opponent's going to do but this can definitely obviously be an end of turn board swing especially in a spider-man professor x um any kind of those locations that stop you playing cards there even locations that stop you playing one two and three cost cards you can just plop this down there nothing is going to stop jeff so i'm definitely excited for this anticipating this as soon as i'm able to get this card i will get it and i will play it until i have 
hit infinite with this card and split its variations to infinity itself. Um, also waiting for the variants to come out of this card because they all just look absolutely adorable. Then we're just going to look at the series drops for uh, the month of April. So series five to four, we're getting Ghost, Stature and Modoc dropping from five to four. And four to three, we're getting Bast, Shuri, Super Scroll, Valkyrie and Black Panther. Uh, personally, I am looking forward to Valkyrie dropping. Um, Super Scroll, I'm not really a, a fan of, but Valkyrie, seeing I own all the other uh, Series 3 cards, I am looking forward to being able to get Valkyrie, especially with the, what is going on now, where you get one Series 3 card per month for free. Um, this month, I was not able to get anything because I own all the Series 3 cards. So I'm very much hoping that Second Dinner resets that towards the end of this month's season. Um, once these cards come into the Series 3 slot, then I'll be able to pick one of them. Um, it'll only be for me Super Scroll and Valkyrie. So I'll just wait till Valkyrie pops up if that's uh, available for me and get Valkyrie that way for free. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, the other cards, Ghost, Stature, Modoc. I own Stature and Modoc already. Ghost, I'm not particularly excited about. So if I do pull her by chance from a cash, it'll be great. But I'm not really excited about any of the other cards coming down. Um, also, additionally, the new cards coming in, I forgot to mention, into Series 5 will be last month's um, rewards track card which is nimrod i didn't put a picture up here just because everyone knows what nimrod does and i don't think that many people are excited about nimrod because nimrod was kind of a letdown in terms of a battle pass card start looking at the bundles for april now this one uh, came out at the beginning of the month and is still currently out uh, which is throg uh, frog of thunder uh, it is going to cost you 7,000 gold, which is a little bit hefty, but for what you're getting, I think is really good value for money. Uh, you're going to get 3,000 collector's tokens, 7,000 credits, 155 Thor boosters, the Throg variant, as well as the avatar, and the title Cold-Blooded. Now, if I had 7,000 credits at the moment, I would personally get this just because it looks dope and also the value you're getting is ridiculous. Basically, just for the, the gold to credits ratio, it's a one for one, which you don't see even in, in, the, in the shop. You don't get a one for one for that. And then you're getting all these other additional things on top of that. So this bundle in particular, I think is extremely good value. If you're able to get it, I'd say grab it. Um, if you're not, Unfortunately, like me, it is something that's going to pass by and hopefully Throg comes into the uh, variant pools at some stage uh, that we can just pull this normally. Um, however, yeah, grab this while you still can. Then the next bundle, which is also currently out and will be out for the rest of this week, is the R Avengers bundle. So this is all the uh, animal variants. Here we have uh, a couple of really nice ones. Uh, this is going to set you back five dollars and five dollars US, and I think that's very very cheap for what you're getting here. So you're getting a Mr. Fantastic variant, an Ant Man variant, and a Captain America variant, known as Mr. Fantastic. Um, and 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 Captain America. You're getting the variants for all of these, as well as their um, avatars. Uh, also getting 35 boosters for each of them. I think again, this is great value for five dollars. Three card variants. Um, these are all cards that you will probably own already, um, but they're just all really cute and adorable and just interesting i love these animal variants and i'm definitely going to be picking this one up um i haven't had the time yet but this is something i'm definitely going to be purchasing especially just for the the most fantastic and ant-man uh one I, I do have a little bit of a problem with the captain america one a friend pointed out to me that captain a meowry cat would have been a lot better and a lot funnier of a pun which i do agree there was a bit of an opportunity missed there but hey captain america is still a really good name for this and this bundle is in my opinion another must get just for those fans who who would like to have some variation dan hip 
bundle. Um, so for 2,900 gold, you'll get Devil Dinosaur and Moon Girl, both by Dan Hip, as well as their avatars. Um, this one, I also think, is quite good value. Um, Dan Hip variants are always great. They're cool looking. Um, if you don't have new variants, 2,900 gold is not that bad for two new variants of cards. Um, I will say it's not as value driven as the first two bundles, but still a great one to pick up. Dan Hip has done a lot of Marvel snap art already, and some people would be looking for this to complete their set and have a complete Dan Hip bundle. Have the Earth Day 616 bundle. Uh, obviously, this is going to be fall in line with Earth Day. Um, this is also going to set you back $10 and you'll be getting two variants, the Hella Gardening variant and Baby Groot variant, along with 400 credits, 400 gold and 35 boosters. Um, personally, I like these variants, especially the Baby Groot one. Um, who doesn't like Baby Groot? Um, but uh, I'm mostly of the mind that I'm a free to play player just because I really can't afford to spend additional money um, on Marvel Snap. So if I could, I would definitely get this bundle. The additional credits and gold are nice. Uh, I would have liked to see a little bit more out of this bundle. Um, but again, this is to support, you know, World Earth Day. Maybe some of the profits will go to an organization um, that helps with that. I hope they announce something like that because that would be a great thing for Second Dinner to do, to be basically giving back to the environment uh, with this basically environmentally friendly bundle. Uh, again, is it worth $10? Uh, definitely, definitely worth uh, $10. I think for most people, for me, unfortunately not. Uh, I'd love to have them, but most likely not gonna be getting this bundle. Next up, we have the Ryan Gonzalez Squirrel Girl bundle. So it costs 5,000 gold. You get Squirrel Girl, Ryan Gonzalez variant, 4,500 collector's tokens, and 155 boosters. A very simple um, bundle, not much there. However, the 5,000 gold, most people are just gonna be getting it for the 4,500 collector's tokens. Um, personally, I love the Ryan Gonzalez art styles. It, like I said in my uh, overview of the Battle Pass, his art style reminds me very much of uh, 80s anime. So your old Dragon Ball, your Fist of the North Star, um, that kind of era. And I love that era of anime. I love that art style. So um because i'm not going to be getting the uh throg of thunder bundle i'm going to try and save up 5,000 gold to get this bundle um just because i love the lion gonzalez art styles plus another 4,500 collector's tokens will not hurt in my journey to actually collect all the cards in marvel snap uh, especially going to be needed once jeff jumps out and i can snag him then right away and then we have the last of the bundles, not including the ones from the Token Tuesday, which I'm not really gonna get into. Um, and this is the Team Cat, Team Dog bundle, uh, costing you 700 gold. You'll be getting 1,250 credits, 105 random boosters, and either the title T, uh, Cat's Rule or Dog's Rule, depending on which bundle you go for. Personally, I'm not gonna be getting this. Um, it's a funny little thing, cat's rule, dog's rule, uh, but I do feel that this is just a bit of a cash grab, random cash grab. Um, I am all in favor of silly bundles. I love the bundle with the rock that we got uh, last month. Uh, that was kind of cool and silly to get that little rock avatar. Um, but this just kind of seems kind of blah for a title and some credits, uh, credits that you can just earn by playing and the boosters, yeah, boosters are nice, especially for cards you don't have. But again, these are 105 random boosters. So you may get boosters for stuff you have already hit infinite and, you know, transformed a ton of times and you don't really need more boosters for that. And you don't get the boosters for the cards that you're looking for. Um, 
So I just think there's too much RNG involved in this. 700 gold is not that much, but I'd prefer to be saving my gold up for that Ryan Gonzalez bundle. Um, you guys can definitely go ahead and get this. Personally, I'll rather save my gold for something a little more substantial. Now time to look at the new locations coming uh, this month. The first of those being Pet Mansion. Uh, turn This turn, all cards must be played here. So basically working the same as a lot of other um, zones, the uh, other locations that force you to play here on specific, specific specific turns um but now this this could be turn one and you have to play a card there so you can't play cards in any other location uh unless you have jeff because then jeff can go wherever the hell he likes um yeah so either you play nothing or you have to just play whatever you have there so it's gonna mess up probably your turn plans especially if this comes out as the third location and you're looking to lock something down this can definitely mess up galactus plans so you can either choose not to play anything here um, and keep your galactus plan going um, but this may you know determine whether you lose that game with galactus then especially if this as i said comes up on turn three usually turn three is the electro play giving you that additional power um, so that you can play galactus early so we'll definitely have to see how this is going to affect the metagame and i think this is going to be released this week as well so uh, we'll just go ahead and see how well this uh, location is going to do uh, the second location is the sandbar cards with abilities can't be played here so um when this location comes out i'm definitely feeling like we're gonna see a lot of sauron decks or sorry sauron decks coming into play um where it basically makes a lot of your cards no ability cards um this is obviously going to be great for uh patriot decks that don't need abilities and uh, later on once we get that magical card living tribunal i think has the ability that unlocks uh, cards with no abilities latent abilities um, i wonder if it's still going to be operational here so if a card is on there and then you play that and unlocks it so i don't know how that's going to work but yeah this definitely seems like a a location that's going to favor patriot decks favor things that are going to be silenced so um yeah i better not play leech during this when this is in the run because once you play leech you give all your opponents cards no abilities and they can just stack up this location as much as they want um so yeah so um i don't think it's going to be as monumental or as much of a disturbance as pet mansion is going to be um, but I definitely think it's gonna it's gonna mix up the play style for that week in particular because I know a lot of people like to play to the location of the week or the hot location. Um, so we'll see how this turns out. But like I said, we'll probably be seeing a lot of um, patriot decks come into play, um, as well as decks that can maybe movement decks as well might slip back in there. Movement has been very lacking uh, of late so we'll see how that goes and lastly we're just going to go ahead and look at the other variants that are being added to marvel snap this month so first up will be uatu which is known as chuatu the watcher um, again this whole month's theme is animal variants uh, so these obviously all animal variants of these characters uh, we then have deathlock which is death cluck um nick fury which is nick furry and black cat which is black catfish so these all look very interesting um i'm just assuming seeing that uh marvel snap and snake and dinner have not announced another variant rush in the introduction video for this season that these will just be added to the variant uh, shop and these will appear in the variant shop and appear in caches as variants as of this month or some point this month um, they maybe just surprise us later on in the month and announce a variant rush for this but i don't think that's going to happen as we just had one now in april and the last one before that was december so it looks like they try and do one every quarter or so um 
and this wouldn't fit this would be a little bit too soon for that if they did have a variant rush for this it would be fantastic because the last variant rush i only got two of the variants which i was very sad about after opening many many caches i only got two of the variants but hey that's just the way uh, rng works but I'd love to have these in my collection just because the animal variants are all interesting. I don't actually really play any of these cards. The only one I really play is Deathlock when I do play a death deck or a destruction deck. Um, but maybe I would play some of the other ones just to play those variants. And that brings us to the end of our April summary. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found some of it informative at least. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the bundles that are upcoming. Are you excited about any of them? Uh, the new cards as well. Are you excited about any specific one? Um, you can just leave that down in the comments below. Uh, and as always, I hope you have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night wherever you're watching this from. And get that geek flag fly. So we've come to the end of the video, wrapping up uh, all the contents that we'll be seeing in April. Uh, what do you guys think of the bundles coming? What is going to be your favorite card? You can comment all of that down in the description below. I'd love to hear from you guys and what you think of uh, the new contents that we're getting this month. And do you think we'll be getting a variant rush? Am I wrong about that? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. So I wish everyone watching a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thank you for watching, and as always, let that geek flag fly.